do I think Marcus Rashford could ever win a Ballon d'Or? Depends who he's up against, doesn't it? Do I think he's a world-class player? No. Do I think world-class players should win Ballon d'Ors? Yes. This is One to One with Simon Jordan. Don't forget to keep liking and subscribing. And as a must, keep leaving those brilliant questions in the comment section below. But away we go with this week's show. I mean, Newcastle have done remarkably well since the moment the ownership model took over. Um, Eddie Howe walked through the door. And I think most of the things they've done, they've gotten right. Now, they've lost in the cup final. And of course, they've had a recent downturn in form, which was inevitable because whilst they've spent a lot of money, it was um, no doubt that to be in the top four was a huge ask. The key component for Newcastle now is not to lose their way because obviously all their season in recent weeks has crescendoed on this cup final. And a cup final for Newcastle for the first time in 25 years is a great achievement. They mustn't compound their disappointment yesterday, which should inevitably be there, by allowing their league form to slip. Now, being inside the top four was probably unrealistic. And at times their form certainly warranted it, but now we're at the business end of the season. And we'll see how much substance they've got. I would suspect they've got enough substance to just about stay inside the top six. Or more to the point, the other teams that supposedly have got the substance, um, like Liverpool and Chelsea, may just afford them that opportunity uh, and they enable uh, Newcastle to stay inside the top six, which is the bet that I took on with Jim White they wouldn't achieve. So even if they finish sixth in the league, it's a remarkable achievement. When you look at the, the landing of the Middle Eastern money into Manchester City, it took them a couple of seasons to really get their engine started. They didn't finish inside the top six in the first real season of huge investment. So I think we've got to get some balance into this conversation. Newcastle have been a remarkable turnaround story, a remarkable feel-good factor for the football club, its supporters, its owners and its manager. Um, and whilst the disappointment yesterday, and whilst no doubt if they don't win the next game, the underlying of Ob um, observations will be, oh dear, they've got a cup hangover, it's all led to that particular disappointment. I think Newcastle are good enough to regain their poise and go again and unfortunately give Jim White that thousand pounds of my money on a bet that they wouldn't finish inside the top six. Do I think Marcus Rashford could ever win a Ballon d'Or? Depends who he's up against, doesn't it? Do I think he's a world-class player? No. Do I think world-class players should win Ballon d'Or? Yes. I mean, form is temporary, class is permanent. You can have form for a season. And on the basis of that, you could win a Ballon d'Or. Let's look down the list of Ballon d'Or winners and see if you put them up against Marcus Rashford, how many of them would you consider that Marcus Rashford was their equal? I think he's a very good player. And unfortunately, in this binary world, people don't seem to understand that it's not well class or crap it's world-class or a good player or not a very good player. So, so Marcus Rashford now falling into the territory in certain people's minds because he's hit a vein of form which is irresistible that makes him world-class. Well then once upon a time in the late 80s, early 90s or mid 80s was Clive Allen world-class when he scored 45 goals in the season. Maybe for that period of time Clive was who happens to be one of my favourite players. Um, but as a rule, you wouldn't lift up the conversation of saying world-class footballers, Clive Allen. So whilst not using Clive as a prop, the answer about Marcus Rashford is I doubt it. Depends who he's up against. Obviously the era of Messi and Ronaldo has gone, but there are other exceptional players like Mbappe around, and Vinicius Jr. that come into the four. I think Marcus Rashford is in an irresistible vein of form. I think he's a confidence player. I think he's repaying the 18 months of doing very little for Man United. And I think we've got to take it as it is, stop trying to put this young man on a pedestal so that when his form dips off, people can take him down. I've always characterised him as a very good player. And I won't then be drawn into the hyperbole and the hysteria of, wow, he's scoring goals for fun. He's a world class player because I don't think he is. So the answer is unlikely. Mourinho won the League Cup and the Europa League in his first season and it fell away. If he's building the foundation again, re-energising, revitalising, reigniting the culture of Manchester United that was so prevalent all through the 90s, all the way up to 2013, then they give themselves a chance to be back at the top table. Winning a League Cup is a nice start. 
It's a staple diet of Manchester City success, but Manchester City success is winning Premier Leagues too. And the challenge for United is, can they, can they come to the table and overcome Manchester City, Arsenal, at some point Liverpool and Chelsea? I suspect they can get there and get close to it. I asked Ed Woodward uh, a year ago, when did, I think, when did they think United would win a Premier League? Do you think they would have been the next five years? 18 months has passed, we've got three and a half years to go, the answer was yes. I think Ten Hag is doing a remarkably good job, so he should, that's what he was paid to do, he was paid to do a good job, not a bad job. And this idea that once upon a time I looked at him in a press conference and said he looks like a small man in a big suit and now gets carried on forever, people can make observations that are prevalent at the time and they change, circumstances alter people become better managers. When Brendan Rodgers was failing at Reading and Watford, who saw him being successful at Swansea and ultimately building Liverpool back to a situation where they were far better and then going on to Celtic because situations change. Now, I'm happy to see a focused and firing Man United. I think the Premier League is better for it. Um, whether that means that you'll ever hear uh, the stopping of Glazers out and whether we'll see a Qatari ownership of Manchester United or whether we'll see a change of ownership full stop. I think that United have a real opportunity this season to lay down a marker to really build upon, to really give themselves that belief factor again which carries football clubs forward. So whilst I don't see them winning the Premier League this year, I do see them after looking at, I think the best thing that could have happened to Man United and Ten Hag was getting beat and their backsides handed them to my Brentford, getting beat by Brighton, the whole world piling in, me having a go about the midget in the centre-half position alongside Graham Sunis, Martinez, and ultimately looking at Ten Hag and looking at some of the players and saying, wow, this is a broken and busted flush. And now looking at it because it gave Ten Hag an opportunity to clean house, get rid of Ronaldo's of the world, which were clearly background noise the club didn't want or need, and build on a platform. And he looks like he's in the groove now. So we'll see, but I still think they've got a long way to go. The Liverpool era over the last five or six years that we refer to hasn't been prolific as it could and should have been. It's been, a, it's been a, the building of a dynamic, feral, fantastic to watch football side that keeps on falling off precipices. When it defended its title, it came back, albeit in a slightly strange season with COVID, where it was all over the place and managed to just nick into the Champions League the following season. It's now this season really run aground in terms of the performances of the side, the clear deficiencies have become evident. And the big question is, is Jurgen Klopp able to regenerate and rebuild a Liverpool side that clearly at one point, in my view, in my view, was the best team in Europe. Now, of course, it didn't bear that out at times because Man City won Premier Leagues and Real Madrid won Champions Leagues. But to watch, at some points, Liverpool were irresistible. Now, that comes at a cost. It burns through players. It means that players have got to work at a level that maybe they can't sustain ad infinitum. So Klopp's big question now is, what is he going to do to regenerate this football club, this football team, not this football club, this football team? And I suspect it will start with the acquisition of Jude Bellingham, if he can get him. If they can get that young man across the line into Liverpool, it'll give them a major shot in the arm. But I think they've got to spend two, maybe £300 million, which is an inordinate amount of money, to compete with what's going on. Clearly, this current funk is not reflective of what you'd expect, and it's a question that needs to be asked. I think it's a change of philosophy from Klopp in terms of looking at what he's got now and not being prepared to patronise it and change direction. I don't doubt he can do it. I don't doubt that Jurgen Klopp is, is not a finished article and not in terms of not finished in terms of his, of his tenure in the Premier League and not his ability to be able to rebuild Liverpool. I'd have more faith in Klopp regaining his poise than not. But the questions will abound in the summer. Who and what and why? because no one saw this coming. Liverpool last year were in the race for four trophies, one, one, two, and got pipped for the other two. Didn't really lay a glove on Real Madrid in the Champions League final, but only marginally missed out in the Premier League and then have just fallen off a cliff again. And there has to be reasons behind it. Nobody saw at the beginning of the seasons the challenges that they would have. They've had injuries, but so has everyone else. So now it's about Klopp. And what is Klopp going to do in the summer with the rebuild to give us back us being the viewing public and the neutral that might like the way Liverpool played, a more dynamic Liverpool side. And I would wager that there's a good possibility he'll do it. Now, of course, if he doesn't, then I don't think Klopp will be there post-2024.
I think no, there's nothing wrong with nerves. I spend a lot of my time being nervous, not nervous in terms of terror, but nervous in terms of adrenaline. If you don't go into situations when you're speaking at a conference or speaking at a sales meeting if you run a business or speaking on a television show or doing a radio show or having an evening with when people want to come and pay to see you at a function, if you're not slightly motivated and full of adrenaline, then there's something fundamentally wrong. It's about how you control your nerves. I think probably one of the first times I was very nervous is when I addressed my first ever sales meeting for my business before I made lots of money and a group of about five people in a room and I was very nervous. But I spend my time being full of, um, not nerves again, but awareness and adrenaline and heightened intensity um, and a feeling of um, the fact that I've got to be very good. And that's not necessary nerves, it's just motivation. So I think if we want to categorize it as nerves, whoever's asking the question and what the genesis of the question is, I don't know. Nerves are a good thing if you can control them. Nerves sharpen your mind. They make you focused. They make you want to be better. They make you have attention to detail. They make you come into a room when you're doing something or involving yourself in something and, and it matters to you and so subsequently whoever you're talking to will get the impression that it will matter to them too. So I spend a lot of time at a heightened sense of attention and detail and sometimes that's nerves, sometimes it's adrenaline. All in all, it's a focused mind so it's not one instance of being particularly nervous. It's a variety of experiences wherever I go Whatever I'm doing, I feel that I've got to be very good, so I put myself under a huge amount of pressure. So, nerves, adrenaline, focus, ambition, desire, determination, they all fall into one package. As long as they don't overcome you, and as long as you can channel that nervous energy into positive outlooks and strong communication, then you're away. Okay, that's it for a very varied one-to-one -one with Simon Jordan. Don't forget to let me know your views on Newcastle, Liverpool's rebuilds and the ever improving Marcus Rashford. Don't forget to keep liking and subscribing and keep leaving those brilliant questions in the comment section below. But I'll see you next week.